Hey guys, this is KSP The Tape, and today you join me for episode 9 of KSP, A New World, and today we start with the mission I failed last time, because this is... Well, this video isn't about getting the new VAB, but it is included in it, which will allow me to do even more awesome things this video, um, and future videos. Yeah, so this is going back to the moon-ish. Um, it flips out a bit, but I'm awesome, so it's fine. Uh, this was actually really annoying. I was really dumb. I'm not awesome. I'm the opposite of awesome. I was dumb enough for, to forget, well, just to overdo my gravity turn. I should really put wings on the bottom of these space aircraft, uh, spa spacecraft um, so that they uh, fly better, fly more straight, don't flip out as easily you, because of ferrum aerospace. That's what causes that, by the way, because it models aerodynamics more realistically. It flips out again, but I have a lot of Delta V on this spacecraft and a very small satellite, which is going to the moon, by the way. Basically, um, last time I failed this mission because I didn't put a mystery goo unit on it, and they were like, and the mission was like, well, you got, you just gotta do that, and I was like, damn it. So yeah, now we're gonna go there. We're gonna get a hundred and something grand. We're gonna buy you a new VAB, and then we're gonna have be able to use more than thirty parts because, for God's sake, I didn't take that into account when I um, when I first did the series. I didn't realize how hard it is to get money in hard mode. I, because I've never really played a huge amount of money-based games, it was ridiculous. Anyway, um, I need to be going this way around the moon, which is why I'm doing a crazy-looking maneuver, and that's simply because, um, well, that's where the way it wants me to um, go around the moon, which is the opposite way that I'd usually go. Um, I think it's like a retrograde orbit, but it's a little bit of an extra challenge, and that's fine, because I think I used my slightly bigger vehicle. I've actually completely forgotten. I think this is the, was the one with solid rocket boosters. Which I do use when I need a little extra thrust, or a little just extra confirmation in my mind that everything will be okay. But anyway, that looks like a pretty decent trajectory. Now we've just got to do an inclination change so that we arrive in the right place. Um, and can put ourselves in the right orbit. Um, yeah, I seem to be doing a lot of these missions, but I quite like it. It seems like I'm setting up a satellite network around the moon in my, in my head right now. Because we're going to be doing moon things and they want me to put a moon base down. So we need a satellite network and things. And then there's a huge one around code. I mean, look at all those satellites. It looks pretty awesome, I think. Um, but yeah, and I imagine as, I get, as it gets pretty ridiculous, I might actually have to deorbit satellites. And a lot of my satellites have RCS and stuff on them. And that's mainly just because... Well, it's actually mainly because I'm worried I'll run out of fuel, and it's just a little extra, you know, um, redundancy if I fail with the rocket. But uh, it's also so that I can deorbit the satellites when there's just too many ships in my save. Um, it's all about maintenance and space cleaning up, although there's probably so much debris that it's just ridiculous. Um, I often think about doing a debris cleanup program in some of my biggest saves. But anyway, it looks like we're almost there. It's just a matter of changing our inclination now until we're in the right position and maybe doing a quick retrograde burn or something, um, although that was pretty dumb, that was uh, burned the wrong way um, because I kind of didn't think about it. Uh, now I think a retrograde burn might just put me in the right place if I remember rightly. Um, stupidly I do a burn north because I was like that looks like retrograde for some reason even though it was pink and a different symbol and I've been playing this game for a few years but I still don't remember what the things look like. Anyway, I'm in the right place, I got paid, baller as fuck. Now let's get some um, science transmit at home and put this here. It's a weird, basic looking satellite, but I didn't want there to be any chance of failing this, so I did use a weak ass little satellite. Anyway, let's upgrade the VAB. 420 grand, 420 blaze it VAB, that is ours. Um, and now we can have like 255 parts or something, which is so nice. 30 parts is just... But yeah, um, the next thing I'm going to need to get is that uh, science center because... Well, because I, I need to be able to use more than 100 science because I'm running out of things to research. Anyway, this is my thing I'm working on. You might be able to guess where it is. Um, and this is, of course, a lander. This was just checking the fuel systems. Yeah, this is my solution. The problem right now is, um, well, what we're doing right now is we're going to go to the moon. We're going to land on the moon with a guy because we've already landed on the moon with a pro. But for some reason, I've just kind of put this off. But it's because I haven't been able to just build the the right looking thing without doing something stupidly tall and I wanted to do it right I didn't want to accidentally lose someone on the moon and I didn't want to rush it so yeah um this is what this is landing on the moon it's got some well you saw it had bigger um SRBs and I would like to use a bigger rocket like a 2.5 meter and I have the 2.5 meter parts well some of them at least but I don't have 2.5 meter fairings so I can't use them which is a bit of an issue although I do have a workaround I'm thinking about actually um, for that, although no, it won't work. It might work. 
I do have a workaround for the fairings. But yeah, um, I need to upgrade the, um, the science center before I can get bigger fairings and use bigger rockets. So that's a bit, a bit harsh. Um, so yeah, that's gonna hold me back a bit. Um, I, th I think, but it's fine. I'm getting like just generally doing missions. I'm getting a lot more money now, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of plans for exploring Minmus and the moon and maybe a few basic probes to Duna and Eve, as you can see in my alarm clock. I actually do have a transfer node to Jewel. And if I can make it cheap enough, I will send something to Jewel because um, I've been meaning to get something from Jewel. Anyway, I'm just getting another science report there, the temperature scan. Just a little extra science to make this mission all worth it. Um, I'm actually being paid to put a pl uh, plant a flag on the moon because um, I've actually completed the moon contract. Um, I did it all with probes and stuff. But yeah, I'm actually being paid to put the flag on the moon and I feel like something else. Um, return science data from the moon. So yeah, two other missions, but yeah. We're gonna set our feet on the moon, our first Kerbal on another, you know, another body, which is actually nine episodes in. That's taken me ages, but you know, as I always say, I've taken the series just kind of... I, I'm doing a lot of probe stuff because money's really important, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it, and if you want to see big crazy things, I have another series where I go into Stellar and Kerbal Space Program, so... You know, you should check that out. You know what else you should check out? My drink driving thing with uh, Jacob and Vicky and Jack that I did on Friday, which I was uploaded yesterday. Um, I don't know why I'm just plugging videos in the middle of my... In the middle, I, I, when I start advertising my other videos, I can't stop. It's a sickness, really. Anyway, um, I deal with myself a little too much because I've stopped using the shift key to throttle up. I just, like, use Z and X and find a middle point. But anyway, I'm just going to use the rest of this stage to um, slow me down and then drop it onto the surface of the moon. And I'm burning slightly above retrograde because I don't want to land in this crater. I want to land in the Midlands. Um, that won't actually be where I land. I'll actually land in the Highlands, which is good because I can never find the Highlands. But yeah, I, I'd like to land in either the Midlands or the Highlands or something for my first landing just because it's a big area and I don't know. It's just tradition for me. I do a lot of dumb stuff just because. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're coming down now. You can see how I did this fuel um, tank thing. They're all clipped together. That was the problem. I couldn't get the, I guess, fuel density right. Because I always use a bit of clipping to make a really small lander. And they're actually all just sideways on a, um, uh, a cubic strut sort of thing. And it's not cheating. I didn't have to turn the part clipping on in the cheat log. Um, they just clip themselves. So I don't <laughs> count it as cheating. But yeah, I quite like this lander. It's a brand new design, um, really. And I think it could do a lot of cool things, um, and it doesn't have a big science thing on it, just because it was easier not to put that on there. But yeah, this is going to be probably a design I'll use a bit, um, until I can make bigger ones. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we're just going to take a few reports, grab all the science we can, spam a bit of science, um, land, oh well, I've got to get the um, temperature scan out the back first. Um, Jebediah Kerwin falling about, um, uh, and I can't quite click on the temperature, well, the thermometer, because reasons. Um, but yeah, Jeb, of course, the first uh, Kerbal on the moon. He always is my first Kerbal to set foot places, although that's not true, because often I have people going other places, like in Solar Civilization, where um, he was the first person to set foot on Duna, but he didn't go to Eve because he was at Duna when we were going to Eve. So I, I want to do stuff like that, have missions going at the same time. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna... I'm not gonna uh, do such a thing where I have to, like, um, wait the whole time between transfers, because that takes a while, and I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with Jewel, so you never get any missions if you, missions all the way to Jewel if you're, like, doing loads of launches, so I'm going to, I'm going to play a little more Kerbally, really, um, as opposed to my old series, because obviously it's different to my old series, my old series was, you know, something completely different from this, um, but anyway, my first landing, Highlands, I always put, um, like, Highlands, or Midlands, or wherever I land, so just so I remember where all the places I've landed. And then the first landing on the surface of an alien world. Then I hit enter to try and go down. Um, and I'm like, that's not my whole thing, so I take the flag down. Um, and then I'm just going to put another flag up, because it's a simple way of doing it. Um, yeah, so we'll just throw our NASA flag down there, of course, because we are the humans of Earth. And uh, it'll just have the same thing. I would just want to note down the uh, person in the spacecraft. Not that I'm ever going to read this flag again, but I'd like there to just be a monument to uh, the uh, pe the people who did the cool things. So yeah, first landing, Highlands, just, you know, a note so that I know where I've landed. Um, and then the plaque text will be uh, the first 
I don't know, it's the first, um, is that the first landing, I say the first landing on an alien world, that's not true, it's the first uh, Kerbal on an alien world, I've landed on this before, I've landed on the moon, but anyway, now it's time to, uh, write the spacecraft and the, uh, and the, and the, and the, uh, name of the pilot, of course, Jebediah Kerman, the most prestigious pilot in our entire agency, it will be nice when I have bigger capitals and can bring, you know, engineers and scientists along, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this text box. It's not text box. It's not particularly well formatted, is it? Anyway, and it was uh, Apollo 5, if you didn't uh, take the count of the name. Yeah, it was the fifth Apollo spacecraft. Um, I did a better than better than better than the humans because they took 11 to get to the surface of the moon. I only took like I only took like five. Uh, <laughs> but of course, I have done this like a billion times before. But anyway, time to jump back into our capsule using our. RCS pack because screw ladders when you've got a jet pack. I mean Anyway, let's try and get in there, you know fairly well and then uh, speed up back into four times time accelerate and uh, head off to uh, Head off back to Kerbin um, or to sit around for a while. I think I may have been checking something but yeah um, And you can see in my alarm clock. I have got three windows coming up. I'm looking forward to going into planetary again I haven't been uh, haven't been to another planet in a little while. I've um, been to some other star systems, but, um, you know. Anyway, like I said, four times time accelerate, we're gonna take off and, uh, fly back to Kerbin, because, well, well, we gotta go back to Kerbin, we're running out of life support. I really should put extra life support on here, because I only had a, I think, I don't think it has a day anymore. I think tech life support's changed slightly, so it kind of screwed me. But anyway, I'm gonna go into a low orbit, it's just save a bit of fuel, although I have so much fuel, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is a pretty capable spacecraft. Um, I think this will be going out to Minmus with a few additions as well. And I'm going to make another one with some more science uh, science bays and stuff. But anyway, this is a pretty good position for returning. Um, once you've played the game enough, you do just kind of remember the positions. Like when, this, um, Kerbin ri when the moon rises over Kerbin, that's when you burn at the moon. When you're kind of a third of the... like a sixth of the moon past the orbit line, if that makes any sense, that's a good time to start um, your burn back to Kerbin. If that makes any sense. But anyway, here we are at Kerbin. The clouds have disappeared. There's been a nuclear... Oh, okay. There's been no nuclear holocaust. Just, um... Just the cloud glitching. Because, well... I don't know. Maybe to save memory. Although you can see the clouds on the moon. I do love looking at a cloudy Kerbin from the moon. I lose my temperature scanner, which is fine because I took the data out of it. I was really scared it was a parachute. I thought it was going to lose Jeb for a second. I would have been very upset. But anyway, let's set up the parachute and drop ourselves down nice and controlled so that we hit the water softly. Um, so that, we, yeah, well, we hit the water softly and the water doesn't kill me softly because that wouldn't be quite so good. Anyway, um, yeah, obviously just left it four times time accelerate because this is pretty boring just watching me fall at the ground. Anyway, let's recover the vessel. Um, we got a lot of science out of this. I think like 80 or something. Yeah, you can see from just extra missions and stuff. And then the mission I completed gives me, like, a bunch of money and a bunch more science. And we'll unlock that, although that was sped up, so I'm not entirely sure what I unlocked. I thought I some various things. And I'm going to start a fundraising campaign so that I get a little more money. But um, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about the strategies because it's nice to have reputation as well. But anyway, almost smash a rocket into a launch pad. And then this is actually going to the moon. Yeah, this is going to the moon. Um, just trying to remember what I was doing. I was, yeah, this is another moon satellite, actually. It's launching on the Python 1.1, which is the slightly smaller version. Oh, and by the way, the um, moon rocket just then was the Python 1.2. It was an extended version of this with big boosters instead of little boosters. Although this has no boosters, because it doesn't need them, because I'm starting to make my rockets more and more efficient to save money, because, um, well... I'm going to need money for a new science center, because 100 science is very limiting. I didn't really expect the uh, initial constraints to be quite so limiting. Like, 30 parts, pretty limiting. What was it, like, 15 tons or something, or 30 tons or something that you could have on the la first launch pad? Very limiting. 100 science, super limiting. But yeah, it's good. It means you have to do lots of research, and quite a lot of, a bit of grinding, which is actually quite nice, because... The th tendency when you're quite good at Kerbal Space Program is just to just go everywhere and just get it all done and then be like, oh, I'm bored. But when you have to really grind at putting satellites in orbit, you have to get quite efficient. Like, I mean, I've always been relatively efficient with my rockets, just because that's how I like to play the game. Um, 
But obviously, I mean, a lot of people just build crazy big rockets. Like, I've been having a lot of fun watching um, Scott Manley's, like, Race to the Moon um, with his giant rockets. And, you know, that stuff's all fun. But I, I just quite like the efficient sort of thing. But, yeah, do, like, putting hundreds and hundreds of satellites in orbit. Well, not hundreds, but, like, just a bunch of satellites in orbit and having to do it under a cost constraint, it makes you be really efficient. It's like, after you've done it, like, ten times, you're like, wow, this is the optimal rocket. And it's actually a pretty good way just to get quite good at the game. Because if you're, like, making really efficient launch vehicles, then you're probably, your massive crazy launch vehicles are going to be insanely effective. That's the way I've seen it. It just makes... But yeah, um, you know, play the game how you want, I guess. Anyway, let's get ourselves into orbit and stop rambling about the awesomeness that is Kerbal Space Program. Um, I need to do a plane change, of course, to put myself in a nice orbit that is, you know, correct to the uh, constraints. Um... Yeah, I was actually a little doubtful this rocket would do it, because I, I usually do this sort of thing with the boosters on it. But I went for broke anyway, and there's RCS on the probe, so I was pretty sure it would get there. And yeah, it went pretty well. I saved a little money. Um, It's just good to optimize stuff. I like optimizing. That's why I love Kerbal Space Program, is it's just, it's just like optimizing simulator, and that's just what I love doing. It's like um, looking through a code you wrote a while ago and just removing all these bits you... <laughs> Although I have to explain my code I wrote a year ago to someone pretty soon because it was a school project and the code's shit, basically. That's the only word for it. Um, well, no, the code's good, the program's good. It's just messy. It's just really messy. And I don't really want to explain it because I don't. I haven't looked at it in ages. Anyway, um, enough of my crazy personal life. It's incredibly boring. Um, and on to uh, our next launch. This is actually is um, the Python one with the full boosters because this is something I haven't really ever done before. This is putting um, a satellite in orbit near the moon. It's like, I called this moon chaser um, because it's going to be basically chasing the moon. It's going to be in the same orbit as the moon, but it's not going to be in orbit around the moon. And you're probably thinking, wait, surely that takes less fuel than the thing you just did, so why do you need the boosters? Well, I will tell you for why I need the boosters. I uh, know, I need the boosters simply because um, it's I, I'm not going to be able to take any advantage from the Oberth effect of the moon, so I am going to need more fuel to get it into that orbit. However, I don't think I actually needed the boosters. I was just an extra precaution. Um, and this is a, pretty much the same satellite. Um, oh, and the last satellite I put around the uh, moon was called Moonio because I was um, employed by the Ionic Spacecraft something or other corporation, so Io from the first. Letters of that, incidentally, a name of one of Jupiter's moons, but irrelevant here. Um, although it was going to the moon, so not totally irrelevant. But anyway, and then moon, moonio, it sounds fun, shut up. Anyway, um, yeah, and um, this is, well, <laughs> oh, it's uh, eclipsed by the uh, Earth there. Talking of which, I did actually catch the, um, in Britain, we well, around Britain, I guess, probably Europe as well, we had a partial solar eclipse, which was very beautiful. It wasn't particularly easy to see, but uh, I did get some good pictures through a polarized lens. Um, well, my lens wasn't polarized. I had some polarized glasses, some really properly polarized ones, and then took pictures through it which, with my phone, which was actually quite good. Anyway, we take this report, but we can't transmit it, but I keep it anyway, which was the same thing I did at the moon just now, just in case I ever come back and I'm like, hmm, grab a bit of science. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, we have reached the end of the episode. This satellite is in position. We are uh, on actually a pretty good track for getting a new VAB. We've just kind of gained money, and that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to do, try and do more interesting missions, because they're all paying pretty well right now. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you will come back for the next episode. Until then, this has been Chaos with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs> Yeah.